Ah, YouTube, a beautiful place. Well, for the most part. YouTube was a platform with many different eras. Now, YouTube's almost been around for 20 years at this point, so I figured I would go over all the different eras of YouTube, starting from 2005 going all the way to 2024. So prepare for all the nostalgia, and let's start with 2005. 2005, YouTube was just created. And at first, it was just like you upload random videos, and that was really it. You just show who you are. I mean, hence the name YouTube. And it was a interesting time to say the least nobody really knew how to grow on the platform and they were just throwing random videos at the wall hoping they stuck everybody was taking videos of their dog or their cat just hoping they become famous one day and of course america's funniest home videos was one of the most popular tv shows in the 90s so it just demonstrated 30 minutes of the goofiest videos it was still around when i was a kid and i absolutely loved the show and i wanted to find more videos like this and that's kind of how i found youtube i found youtube when i was in second grade in 2010 i know i'm a fossil i get it and honestly that's why i liked youtube at first i was looking for like funny ass videos like that and eventually i stumbled upon some of the upcoming creators on youtube like smosh unfortunately fred my ears will never be the same again i wish i never found his channel and annoying Aaron. yeah a bit of a questionable taste on the last two but smosh was pretty good but this first era of youtube was an era surrounding you it was an era where you could just turn the camera on be yourself and that was really it as long as you were charismatic you were easily gonna be a viral sensation and it was literally overnight too and a lot of the times back then anything could really go viral the first video ever uploaded to youtube me at the zoo has 313 million views absolutely insane the possibilities were endless you could record a video of your uncle rick just falling over at the function upload it it could be a viral hit the next night and well that's what happened to youtuber pewdiepie he just uploaded a video of him playing call of duty shit went crazy and that's why in 2000 2011 to 2013 the gaming era started taking over on youtube around this time people like pewdiepie jacksepticeye markiplier they were on top of youtube they were the fastest growing creators on the platform now i would watch their videos all the time when i was in fifth sixth grade and to this day they're all doing pretty well for themselves i remember watching them play fnaf all the time i don't know how the hell that shit genuinely scared me i was just roaming the halls at night afraid of what was lurking in the darkness that freddy was just gonna pop out of nowhere i didn't even have a pc so a lot of these games I didn't have. And although I really wanted to play these games, I was a broke fifth grader. I couldn't actually go out of my way and buy me a PC and start playing Happy Wheels. I had no funds, bro. So I said to watch Jacksepticeye play it. Every day when I would get home from school in those years, that was the first thing I would watch. And that was the point when I realized I'm like, damn, I kind of want to be a YouTuber too. Like this looks really fun to do. And of course, YouTube's my full-time job. So here we are now. Thank you. I, I appreciate y'all. Around this time, or maybe a few years before, this is around the time YouTube YouTubers started to make serious money and this could actually be a career for people. At this point, YouTube was only going up and it was only growing in users. And this is when YouTube started to build so many different separate niches, the React era. This was an era where people literally just sat down and did nothing for the most part or just made some stupid comment. But now reaction videos aren't bad anymore. A lot of people are good reactors, like they give commentary on the video and I don't mind when people react to my stuff at all. But it's different when you're just sitting there staring at the camera like what kind of insightful value are you adding to my content bro like it's almost like they're a green screen kid it's crazy like sometimes you forget that they're even there there was this dude called jinx back in the day nowadays he would not survive bro would get fucking terminated a lot of them would just laugh and that was it like that was their only reaction people would subscribe just for their laugh like it was crazy some streamers reacting to this right now what's good if you're watching but i just hope to god that there's nobody just staring at this video for the entire duration and they're gonna essentially just post my video as their VOD. That's crazy. Prank channels. Now, I don't hate all prank channels, but there's a lot of them that just take this shit way too far. A lot of these prank channels would do the dumbest pranks for clout. Like, no matter the repercussions of the prank, or no matter how stupid it sounds, they would do it anyway because they just wanted the clout. There was this one dude who went in the hood and asked people if they wanted to get popped. Like, dude, don't be surprised if you just get shot in the face right now. Like, seriously, how stupid can you be, bro? Why are you going around doing dumb shit like that and the title game was crazy too bro people would start spamming gone wrong gone 
spectral in the hood at 3 a.m. The stunts just got dumber and dumber each time because, I mean, I guess that's just what people were anticipating. And they also wanted crazier reactions from the people as well. And now, a lot of people were critics of these pranks, and hence the 2015-2016 era of YouTube came about. And honestly, well, I wouldn't be here without these guys. I'm gonna be honest. Raid is obviously one of my biggest inspirations. I watch that dude's content, like, all the time, still to this day. And people like Leafy, I would watch him all the time during this era. A lot of my friends liked his content too. People would hiss in the hallways it was actually crazy how much motion leafy had and while this era was basically people just sitting in front of a mic talking about whatever with some footage to overlay like grade would do drawings leafy did gameplay h3 did face cam so on and so forth these people would react to videos or just talk about random things and honestly bro this era had me glued to my screen bro like i couldn't stop watching these videos but looking back at it as an adult now yeah a lot of these people took shit way too far sometimes and it was truly at a point where advertisers were not happy with what they were being shown on and hence in 2017 that's when the ad apocalypse happened and yeah this was basically the time where uh yeah youtubers were going broke or maybe it wasn't that bad i don't know but that's what they made it seem like like it was bad bro after working on a video for an entire week you wouldn't be able to get a burger at mcdonald's bro it was tough the advertisers were like you know what fuck you youtube you're allowing this kind of content on the platform we're done so youtube had to start demonetizing people a lot and so on and so forth until they eventually got their ads back i think eventually things got better in 2018 but before we go there we got to talk about a few more eras the 3 a.m era oh my god i don't know how anybody believed this shit basically how all these videos would go guys we're calling a creeper at 3 a.m in the morning they would get their phone change the contact name to creeper and have someone make random noises through the phone and boom all of a sudden it's a creeper and how the fuck would would these people get access to call up a fictional video game character? I don't know how kids made sense of this, no clue. But this was an era of a lot of fake videos as well. People would do things like, quote, mail themselves in a box and pretend they got left at some person's random doorstep. Bro, if that actually was you in the box dude you would die what the fuck you would not have enough air to breathe in the ups truck like you're cooked dude and hand in hand with the fake videos era came the vlogging era both of these eras kind of simultaneously work together people like rice gum were at the top logan paul phase rug like i used to watch all these guys around that time and somehow a lot of these videos i could not tell they were fake like i was genuinely so stupid i thought logan paul genuinely had beef with Jake Paul. I know, I was a stupid ass kid. Why in the f would you have YouTube beef with your own brother? That would be like me cooking up a diss track on the duck. That was also a big part of this era too. Everybody was making diss tracks on each other. The next YouTuber diss track was always being anticipated. People would talk about it at school. I I'm actually serious about that. Instead of anticipating the next Aubrey Graham single, we were waiting for rice gum. <coughs> Oh my god, that was bad. Now, as we move to 2018, people like Ninja were taking over. Everybody that was playing Fortnite was growing, pretty much. Fortnite was everywhere. It was on YouTube, it was on the news, your fucking mom heard about it. In 2018, I mean, you would think of Fortnite, honestly. You wouldn't think of anything else. It was a big part of YouTube culture. And it was also a big part of the 2018 YouTube Rewind. I had to mention this in my video. I saw the Odd Ones Out make a video about it recently, so I had to mention it. So yeah, in 2018, 2018 people hated the youtube rewind so much that they just stopped doing it to be fair yeah it was pretty cringe i'm gonna be honest and this video ended up being the most disliked video on youtube so youtube got the hint they're like all right you know what Fuck you no more rewinds they must have went crazy on the budget they got will smith to be in it will smith and after that they just started doing like top 10 type videos because they just got cooked so bad i mean honestly no matter what they post at this point for a quote to youtube rewind it's just gonna get cooked the feedback in the comments is just gonna be overly negative so they're definitely not bringing it back in 2019 family channels started to get really popular and honestly this is the formula for getting your kid bullied at school 
dude, your whole life is put on camera, so people have all that intel on you. They have all the info, all the details they need to bully the shit out of you. And just being on camera all the time, I don't know, man. It probably just does some weird psychological damage that I don't know about. They just let whatever the hell slip on the internet. One lady recorded her son crying and was telling him to make a face for the thumbnail because something tragic just happened. Act like you're crying really quick. I am crying. Go like this. No, I'm not. I'm actually seriously crying. No, I know, but go like this. Like why would you ever want to blast that on the internet? And what do they do when the kid grows up? I mean, some of these family channels have like seven, eight kids, which I don't know how the hell they manage that. What are they going to do? My son goes on his first date vlog and they're just going to record his every move and they're going to be like, guys, comment down below. Does he have riz? I'm never doing that again. Jesus Christ. Yeah, it would just be the most awkward thing ever. Like I know me personally, I definitely would not want to grow up with my entire life on camera. That's just so weird. In 2000, 2020 YouTube shorts dropped. They dropped it to compete with TikTok and it helped a lot of new content creators get out there, but it also spawned in a shit ton of brain rot. So around this time, things like Coco Melon were already getting popular. All the Coco Melon babies were on their iPads and shit. At one point, Coco Melon passed PewDiePie. Like, I genuinely don't know how that happened. So this was an era of a bunch of kids' content spawning in on the platform. YouTube shorts was doing well and Coco Melon was doing well, getting a lot of kids just hooked onto YouTube. YouTube. And of course, that's making them money, so they're gonna keep pushing that kind of content. They just got that shit going on the TV all day, bro. I've already talked about this enough in my video about brain rot, so you get the point. But in 2023, 2024, one of the greatest YouTube, well, slash Twitch era spawned in. The streaming era. Honestly, I like this era a lot. There's a lot of great streamers on the come up right now, in my opinion. Although there aren't many YouTube streamers, a lot of streamers upload their shit onto YouTube. And some of these streamers are funny as hell, I'm not gonna lie lie but some of them are just dog ass like neon for example jack doherty a lot of these streamers are just built off of fake drama and beef and all this other shit like there's always neon and jack doherty clips on twitter every other day like they're clearly just clip farming neon did some stupid shit as of late it doesn't really surprise me to the point where he got banned on kick how does that even happen i don't know and jack doherty well it's jack doherty and streamers like jinxie bro is taking over the internet it genuinely inspires me to keep making videos every day to see streamers grow that fast for just being authentic being themselves but yeah those were the eras of youtube